Hello, stat students. This is day two of linear regression. Thought I'd dress up today for the occasion. And as soon as my hot water in the microwave is ready and I make a cup of tea, we'll get started. I've got my tea, I'm ready to go. Mm, that's good stuff. So let's talk about what we're going to um, be learning today. <coughs> Blow that up a smidge. There we go. We're going to um, do the world's fastest review on what linear regression is. Then we're going to look at a, a simulation from the University of Colorado. Go Buffs if you're into that. And then we'll talk a little bit about extrapolation. <coughs> so let's review what um, linear regression is. Linear regression is trying to find the best fit line through a data set. Now that assumes the data is linear in the first place, but if it is, then we wanna know the equation of the line that goes through that data set, and we use a method called the least squares regression method, which means that we want to take the sum, or I'm sorry, the vertical distance of each data point to our regression line, Take the, square, um, take the square of those distances and add them up, and we want that number to be the smallest number possible. And once, once we have that, then that's the line we'll use. And we have a method for that, and we've already talked about how to um, get the slope and y-intercept. Let's review for a moment. What's the equation for the slope of the least squares regression line? The slope is r, the correlation coefficient, times s sub y over s sub x. s sub y is the standard div of all the y coordinates of your data points, and s sub x is the standard div of all the x coordinates of your data points. r is the correlation coefficient that we found in uh, the correlation coefficient video. You can find that using either uh, a formula using a bunch of sigmas or you can find that using um, the formula sum of z sub x times z sub y divided by n minus one. So that's the slope of the regression line. What is, well, before I ask about the y-intercept, what point will the least squares regression line always, always, always go through? If you said it's the point X bar, Y bar, yay, go get yourself a Girl Scout Thin Mint cookie. Because the, the line will always go through X bar, Y bar, <coughs> that means if we um, put X bar into our regression equation, it should give us Y bar. So if we know the slope and we know X bar and we know Y bar, we can substitute that into the equation and get B and b is y bar minus m times x bar. That was all in the correlation coefficient video and the um, first video for linear regression. Now I wanna show you um, a simulation about linear regression so we can talk about what it really is, what it means, what we're doing with it. <coughs> so I wanna to go to this website, it's um, a University of Colorado website. I've blown it up down here. This uh, view of it is what it looks like today. Maybe it will look different when you go to it. But if you scroll down, 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 <coughs> eventually you will get to um, a linear regression simulation. Let's do that now. <sighs> You'd think I'd be quicker at this, but I'm not. Alrighty, I think I found it. And here we go. 
<clears throat> so here's the um, PHET. I don't know what that stands for, but there you can see it is um, University of Colorado. We're just going to scroll down here. <clears throat> oh, went too far. Least squares regression. Here it is. And I'm not going to download it or embed it. You can if you'd like. I'm just going to play it. <laughs> now let's see what this uh big okay. Let's see if I can shrink that a little bit so that you don't get my picture in the way. Of anything important. <coughs> All righty. So here is an X, Y axis, obviously only the first quadrant. But let's see. I'm just going to pick some data points and put them out here randomly. <clears throat> now, what I need to do is I need to, I'm going to try to eyeball in what I think is the best fit line for that data. So there's a slope. <clears throat> I don't really like that line. I don't mind the slope, but I don't like the line itself because you can see there's a, um, just looks like it's too close to these two points up here. And it's too far from these points down here. So I need to lower the Y intercept a smidge. There we go. That looks like the least squares. That looks like the best fit line to me, just eyeballing it. Given these data points, now let's let the simulation figure out the best fit line. Ooh, I was off a little bit. <coughs> and let's find the correlation coefficient of that red line. Positive 0.93. So that is a very strong linear relationship. But you can see that my prediction was way off. I'm going to turn off the best fit line. So if we were to use my line and want, want to predict what X was at 20, well, I'd substitute 20 in here and I would get, I'd get a number way up here. What the best fit line would predict would be right here. So I'd be, I'd be a few points off already. So it's best, we don't want to eyeball these things. We want to come up with the least squares regression line. So let's start again. I'm gonna, this time I'm going to do a negative slope. Just randomly picking data points. Now, I'm looking at those um, data points going, yeah, that looks kind of linear. So it makes sense to run a regression line through it. And I should probably bring it down just a smidge more. All right, that's my line. That's what I think is the best fit line through the data. Let's see what the buffs think. <coughs> oh, my eyeballing it is not looking good here, folks. This is why you want to trust the math, not your eye. Because the best fit line has a slope of negative 1. My line has a slope of negative 1.36. So you can see here at 0, I would predict um, a value of 24.5. Whereas the actual prediction based on the data would be 21.2. Don't trust your eyes, trust the math. Now, this one has a correlation coefficient of negative 0.89, which means it is going to have a negative slope. 
And that's still a pretty strong linear relationship. Now I'm going to turn. <coughs> I'm going to turn the uh, axes on here because this time I'm going to try to put things in a parabola and well, it's kind of hard to do it exactly because you can see I can move those points around. But maybe one, one, two, three. Okay, that looks like about it. Uh, Right about here. I can't even see those grid lines very well. I wonder if you can in the video. You know, like one more over one, one. <coughs> All right. It should be, um, I'm, I'm hoping that's a pretty good um, parabola there. Looks like I took y equals x squared, reflected it over the x-axis, and then translated it 10 units right and 10 units up. So let's put the best fit line through here. And if my points are exactly on the um, coordinates that I want them to be, this should have a slope of zero, and it does. <clears throat> so that means that no matter what, if we come out here to five, the least squares regression line would predict a Y value of 6.61. If we come out here to 20, the least squares regression line will predict a value of 6.61. Clearly, that's not very good for prediction. And of course it's not, because this data isn't linear. And because the slope of this line is zero and the standard D of the Y's and the standard D of the X's are both um, positive, then the correlation coefficient also has to be zero. So this is exactly why you want to graph your data every single time. It's obvious there's something going on here, but <coughs> it's not linear. I do want to show you something else. Another reason why you might want to graph your data. All righty, one more. And now I can just put all sorts of data points in here. This will uh, serve my purposes quite well. <clears throat> now it should be obvious that as X is getting bigger, for the most part, Y is getting bigger here. The problem is as X is getting bigger, um, well, let's just do the best fit line. <clears throat> you can see that you're getting a bigger variation around it here. The variation around the line isn't that great, but as you get further and further out, the points get farther and farther from the line, which means that when you get out here to 20, it looks like you might have data points from down here to all the way up here, data points. It's only gonna predict this one. It's just not gonna be very good. Let's see what the correlation coefficient is only 0.46. But anyway, there's definitely a pattern here. Not only as X gets bigger, Y gets bigger, but as X gets bigger, the data points get further and further from the, from the regression line. That's just not good. That tells you that there's something going on with the data and maybe your regression line isn't gonna be very predictive. Now, when we talk about being predictive, we're talking about extrapolation, <clears throat> which was the third and final um, topic I listed on the um, opening slide. Extrapolation means I want to predict what's going to happen out at some higher X value. 
in general, some books, and I believe our current textbook tells us this, don't extrapolate outside of the data. In other words, if we go back to um, sharing, which I'll do here in just a moment, <coughs> if I wanted to predict something, I could um, I could trust the prediction would be pretty good from x equals looks like about three and a half out to about x equals 19. I, I would always say you can predict, you can go a little bit, you can extrapolate a little bit beyond the data in both sides, but you don't know that the data is always, always, always going to be linear. The data might go up for a while and then level off, and then might even drop back down. So um, politicians do that a lot. They take two data points and they go linear and say, well, from here we got this much money and and this data point, we got this much money. So if we extrapolate, this policy will bring in this much money. But uh, that's not quite how it works. In fact, I'm going to show you what I mean by that in a drawing. Ah. All righty. So let's go back to the Elmo. <clears throat> Back in the 80s, there was an economist named Art Laffer, and he created what's known as the Laffer curve. Now, he drew it as something that, that's kind of like a parabola, but we don't know what the curve really looks like. Maybe it looks like that. Maybe it looks like this. But what we do know <clears throat> is that if X represents the tax rate, you tax people either 0% all the way up to 100%. And Y represents how much money the government gets from that taxation. We know that, just logically speaking, if you, your tax rate is zero, the government doesn't get any uh, money from taxes. So it's the money flowing into the treasury is here. If you tax people at 100%, you take all their money, they won't work. What's the point? So eventually nobody will work and the government uh, money flowing into the treasury will be zero. Uh, what happens in here? We don't really know completely. What government tries to do is it tries to find this sweet spot. Hmm. This. is the ideal tax rate, whatever percentage that is of your income, because that will bring in the maximum amount of money to the treasury. <laughs> Let's just assume that the curve looks like this. What some politicians will do is they'll say, well, when the tax rate was here, we got this much money. When we raised taxes, We got this much money, so we raise taxes from here up to here. We're going to extrapolate, and if we raise taxes over to here, we should get this much money. But what we've done is we've assumed that this section of the curve is linear and that the curve will always continue to be linear when this curve isn't linear. If this were our actual curve, we wouldn't get this much in revenue. We'd only get this much in revenue because again, if you tax people too much, some will start um, stop working, 
some will start resorting to the black market or you know working under the table or something like that um, side jobs uh, in order to avoid the taxes so you this is called extrapolating beyond the linear portion of the data and you always have to be careful of that <coughs> <coughs> And let's see, need to shut off this and find you a new screen to share. <coughs> In one of our earlier videos, we talked about correlation is not causation. Sometimes um, things are cor uh, correlated um, coincidentally. Here are some examples. That's good tea. Let's look at another one. <clears throat> I think we've seen this one before. It has nothing to do with uh, this lesson. I just love that picture. Um, if you have not read XKCD, the comic strip, and it's for smart people, so you should. It's XKCD.com. Anyway, <clears throat> if you got it, you're one of the smart kids. Here's another one from XKC from XKCD. Let's blow that up a bit. <clears throat> In theory, this curve would now be flat, hopefully for the rest of her life. It's certainly not going to be linear. She's certainly not going to get married every single day, get a new husband, which is what extrapolating here would imply. And that's it for my pictures. So that's a little bit more about linear regression. Um, Hope you have a much better understanding of it now. Have a great day.